Well, collectors, how we doing now? It's uh, the July 4th weekend, and uh, of course we're we're off, of, but eh, we like to work on the, what else are you going to do in this business? Uh, so we, we tend to work every day here, holidays, Sundays, it doesn't matter, and that way we can always bring uh, sort of the best things uh, to you because we work very hard at it. So we're going to start with a our next unboxing, I think it's number 38, is it, Ob? No, I have no idea. You have no idea? Okay. I think it's 38. Um, we don't have a lot of stuff, but um, maybe it'll be something that will uh, you'll enjoy at least over the holiday weekend. So we'll, we'll get started here. Uh, my, uh, my first box or envelope, I guess it is. Uh, uh, you guys probably remember my friend from Puerto Rico, Carlos. He's always sending me stuff, and uh, here we go again with something. So let's let's see what old Carlos uh, sent me this time. He's really on the ball here with finding things. Let's see here. Shouldn't be that difficult to get out of this, but here we are. Okay, here we go. Got his letter, something inside of this cardboard here. Got my trusty Bob Burns opener here, cutter. Well, it looks like well, it looks like we have a couple of armbands, but they look like nice ones. Boy, Carlos, you really wrapped this stuff up here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's see. We got this is a, a nice um, veterans. It was an officer. We can tell that by the line running through it. And uh, yeah, the line goes all the way around, and it's open on both sides. And the wool, the black wool, was in perfect condition. That's a real nice one. And then another regular NCO type veterans. Um, this is also open in the back and the wool is, is absolutely perfect. This is the second type uh, insignia that the veterans used. Oh, <laughs> yet another one. <laughs> and this is an officer example too. Must be a lot of German war veterans in Puerto Rico. Uh, I don't know what it is here, but uh, there's really something in. And I don't know what this is. Well, maybe some of you guys know what it is. I don't know what that is. It looks like some kind of an armband. Uh, looks German made, but has nothing on it. Well, anyhow, they're all good things that I can use. Thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, keep them coming. We always can use. A good original stuff like that. Okay, so there's one down, guys. And let's see what we got else here. Here's a small package. I don't really know what this could be, but only one way to find out. Oh, we got a box inside. Yeah. Let's see what this could be now. Oh, paper, some packing. <laughs> this is a, oh yeah, this is <laughs> this is great. Uh, this is from my friend Alex in Russia. From Russia, I shouldn't say in Russia. And he's, I showed you one of the figures that he made before. And what he does, he has photographs of uh, Russian uh, soldiers wearing captured uh, German weapons. So he makes a miniature model of each photograph that he has. And this is the second one now. Look how nice that little tiny army dagger is, huh? on a Russian uniform. Boy, that's a great thing. Thank you so much, Alex. Well, 
I'll tell you collectors that that calls for a drink here we got to start out it's uh, it's a little early well it's two o'clock I guess that's okay so here's to you here's to uh, Independence Day too important day in America sorry you Brits it just happens you know but happy uh, 4th of July oh that's a strong one man that baby is really strong well I guess I wasn't looking when I when I poured that uh, Imperial and uh, of course that calls for a, a cigar too looking at this nice um, miniature here I think that's a neat thing that Alex is doing you guys like those things I do I think it's really uh, really interesting and what a beautiful job he's doing with it too I think you guys know who Alex is Alex has the, the YouTube's uh, war relics he calls it and uh, he goes around to all the shows in America as well as the, the shows in Europe and uh, uh, and he's very fine very fine fella so I like I like this a lot this is very good thank you Alex Let's see what else we have here well this is something from uh, collector Jeff Richards uh, you guys may know him uh, he's the collector that has all of the uh, NSKK daggers with the tags and the bags you remember seeing that in some of my past videos and uh, I don't know what this is but it says on here save for unboxing video so here we go we'll see what uh, see what Jeff is sending here I hope it's something that you guys will like we shall see. Uh -huh. Let's see what this could possibly be. Jeff's only been collecting a few years and he's probably got the best uh, collection of uh, uh, tagged NSKK and bagged NSKKs in the world. It's just a, I think he has about 25 of them now, something like that. Incredible that there's that many that uh, escaped all this time. Uh, let's see, what is this here? Uh, Greetings, Mr. Whitman. I found this photo on my phone when checking out other photos. I think it is a great photo of Dr. Ron Distelhorse, who I met at one of the SOS shows and snapped the photo. Very sorry to learn of his passing. Yes, I told you guys that Ron did pass a few months ago. Uh, perhaps you could hang this up on the wall behind you when you are doing these wonderful unboxing videos. Uh, that way he will always be around the collecting world. Say hello to Robbie and keep up the good work on the DTC unboxings. Hi Robbie from Jeff Richards. <laughs> Let's see what this photo of Ron Distelhorst is. I won't be kind of curious. Uh, I think it's in the wrap. You think that's what, yeah, this is yeah. just, uh, okay. So that's what, uh, that's what Mr. Richard sent us. All right. We shall see here. Fumbling around. Let me get a drink before I see old Dr. Ron. Hmm. Ah, yeah, that's good. Ha, ha, ha. Wow, this is really nice. Um, Jeff has gotten a picture of himself with with Dr. Ron. This, of course, is Ron Distelhorst and, and Jeff Richards over here. Uh, Ron was a great guy. You know, in his early life, he was a doctor on a atomic submarine. So you know he was a smart guy or you couldn't have a job like that so he's a face to remember he's gone now but he did a lot for the hobby and isn't that nice of um, Jeff to 
think of him that way and think of us too. I mean, that's just a very, very thoughtful thing and I appreciate that. And Jeff, I will hang this up. I guess we can, we can probably find a spot here for it. it shouldn't be a problem. And we'll do that when, we, when the video is over. Thanks again, Jeff. That's a really a nice, uh, thoughtful thing. I like that a lot. Let's see what comes next here. We've got an overnight delivery here. Must be very important. Comes from New Hope, Pennsylvania. That's not far from here. You know, we live, we live almost on the Delaware River, which separates New Jersey from Pennsylvania. And New Hope, uh, Pennsylvania is one of those real nice uh, country towns along the Delaware River and is a great um, visiting place. Uh, you can also see a lot of motorcycles there. The motorcycle guys like that place. So it's worth, if you ever have a chance to go to New Hope, it's worth it. There's plenty of antique shops. And every once in a while, you can even find some German stuff there, too. I have in the past. So, we'll get this open and see what this is all about from New Hope, Pennsylvania. All right, got a little letter here. Oh, there we go. It's like an edge weapon, guys. We all like that. Uh, some kind of bayonet it looks like. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. I remember this man writing me about this. Uh, this is a very, very interesting bayonet. As you can see, it's a it's a, got a real early Bakelite grip. You can tell that by how fine the, um, uh, the checkering is on it. Uh, it's a standard um, bayonet hilt. It's got a little green felt in it. Uh, but it's got the um, police insignia on it. And then on top of it, you'll notice that it's in a leather scabbard. So it's not like we would just see a, an early bayonet with a police insignia in it. It was made this way, certainly with the, um, the early brown scabbard and, and uh, dark brown frog. And oh, a nice blade on it. It's a um, kind of a standard bayonet blade with a wide fuller. Um, it's in uh, almost mint condition. And it's not marked on the back. It does have a, uh, a, a nice uh, green felt. It's a little worn, but uh, so you think, well, gee whiz, what the heck is this? Um, I think what it probably is is um, maybe a bayonet uh, that was used when the uh, police were just getting organized under Himmler, and um, uh, perhaps this may have been all that was available before the time that they uh, um, redid the early Weimar bayonets, which you guys know that they made into the police bayonets for the Third Reich period. So I've, uh, I've never seen a, um, a bayonet like this, uh, but I believe that it's, um, it's a very great thing uh, for someone that specializes in police bayonets. Uh, I think it's very, very rare. And the condition is uh, terrific too. So that's something that uh, would go nicely in a, in a police collection. Isn't that nice? Very, very nice piece. Even got the mortise button on it. So, well, that's great. Thank you from New Hope. I'm glad to get that. Okay, collectors are moving on to the next thing. Gee, I like that police bayonet. That uh, Robbie just said it doesn't look humped up. It is not humped up. It is an original thing. Mm. Ah, that drink's a little humped up. Man, that baby. Well, it says open this end, so I'm going to follow the instructions on this box. This box is really heavy too. So it must be. 
either a lot of things or just one real heavy thing, but we can see. Oh, I've got a little letter here. Lots of plastic bags here. Oh, yeah, good. An envelope with something. We'll look at that in a minute if it pertains to what we have here. Oh, we got it. Oh, I like the bags. Looks like we got several items here, collectors. So we've got T, two Whitman bags and one Johnson bag, so that's okay. Let's see, that seems to be it in the box. And we'll take a look here and and see what the uh, see what the mailman has brought us this time. Oh, good, a little cat hair on the. This man must have a cat or a dog. But that's good to see. I like that. See what we got here. Oh, it looks like two, two pieces in one bag. Oh, good, a sock. Well, oh, that's a, that's an unusual color grip. Oh, that sure is. That is really an unusual color grip. It's like somebody's kitchen from the '70s. Yeah, I don't like the color of that grip too much. And then we're missing a, um, a scabbard oh, yeah. van too. Got a real port a -pee. Let's see. What... I don't see any maker on yeah, this. Yeah, it's on the front. It's backwards. Oh, there it is. Um, it's like a holler. Yeah, but it's... Um, yeah, um, if I'm reading this right, yeah, what you got here, collectors, this is a, um, a reproduction that we've been seeing for a while. Um, the, uh, uh, the grip, as Ob noticed and I noticed, notice the odd color of it. I mean, it's yellow, but it's not really the yellow that we're used to seeing. And uh, the fittings are, you know, they look all right uh, on the hilt, but on the scabbard, uh, th this has a pattern that uh, that we just, it's not, it's not correct. And the blade, uh, it's marked Heller, Holler, excuse me, but if you also see at the bottom, it says Holler Berlin, and of course. Uh, there were no Berlin makers, except for the Bergsmuller NPEA group and the uh, the SA group Hako. Uh, but uh, F. W. Haller was located in um, Soligen, uh, not in Berlin. So the only thing that's actually period here, collectors, is the knot. So this is what happens sometimes. Um, People get fooled. Uh, these these pieces we've seen around for about, I guess, 20 years now, and um, they come from Spain. So take a good look at that grip. Just remember that color, and don't buy anything with that color. So that's something that's going to have to go back to the sender. But gee, I hope we have uh, we have better stuff than that. Well, we shall see here. Oh, another sock, and it looks like a match. Uh, let's see. We oh, this is looking a lot better. Yep, this is this is fine. Uh, yeah, this um, this looks like a nice um, uh, earlier Alcozo dagger. Uh, just by the looks of the cross guard. And also, uh, the way the pommel goes way up like that, how it flares out, that's a typical uh, um, Alcozo thing. 
and then the uh, scabbard screws look like Alcozo so let's see whether we're right on this or not yeah we're right it's a it's a uh, Alcozo uh, AC S blade which would put it about 1941 that's the next to the last trademark that they used and uh, the blade is in mint condition uh, I love the grip the way it's toned and the porta pee is nice the scabbard is perfect so that's a that's a good thing it blades and backwards again blades and backwards yeah well you know we can change that around know, that's easy it's enough just silly. so we'll put the, and don't forget this color remember that color collectors it never existed that color is no good as soon as you see it run to the next table excuse yourself first but run to the next table and maybe get a drink so you can recover from the shock of it that's what I'm doing mm. well things happen like that you know uh, it, at first glance it really looks like a, a good thing and uh, well that's why you gotta gotta study up on this stuff a little bit collectors and Let's see what's in this bag. This is pretty heavy too. Oh. Same, same kind of stuff with a with a wrapping here. What did I do with my Bob Burns cutter here? It's going to time, is it? There's a couple cutters over there, I think. Right here. Right there. Oh, okay. All right, we'll grab another one here and see if we can get this open. That one's not sharp enough to, to cut your fingernail with. Just your finger. This one's no good either. What the heck happened to that cutter? I can't believe it. Oh well, what are we going to do? <laughs> Wasting everybody's time while I look for a cutter. This thing is no good at all. Um, Just get more, get more meat on the uh, knife. That's all. Yeah, I can do that with this. No, just push it out further. Don't they, don't you rake these this way, Av? Yeah, but you, you got to bring it in. Cut your finger. Ah, okay. Now we should have a fresh blade. Here we go. All right. We got a Bob Burns cutter and it's working good. Uh, Lord knows what happened to that other one. We must have had a cutter thief in here while I wasn't looking. Taking a sip out of my drink or something. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, this, this is looking nice. Oh yeah. Wow. Ha <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Wow. It's a first model RLB with beautiful leather, beautiful toning to the fittings. Just look how those, the silvering on the fittings have toned. Wow, that's, that's a honey. The, the leather is still just about perfect. Little couple scuffs here and there, but hardly anything. Just pull it out of the uh, scabbard just an inch or so. We'll see if the, if the shadow's there. Yeah. yeah that's, that's uh, let's see who made this one. Oh. That's one you don't see much uh, for early RLBs. That's the, uh, mm. uh, the chronic mark <coughs> of um, Ernst Witt. And it looks like that blade is, is mint also. Let me just pull the rest of the blade out and make sure there's a tip on it. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a first rate piece. Yeah, collectors, that, that's a, and that's a very hard piece to find. A first model RLB officer is a, is a rare dagger. And that one's in superb condition.
Yeah, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now let's see what else was in this bag. Almost lost my cutter again. Yes, sir. I I love to see a first model RLV officer. That's that's really a that's a rear dagger. Well, another matching sock. Boy, we're doing great with these socks, collectors. Oh boy, wow. Ha. Another another first rate piece here looks like. Oh yeah, boy they don't <laughs> Uh, they really don't come much nicer than that. This is the first model um, enlisted man's RLB, and uh, this one has all solid nickel fittings. The hanger is still there. Uh, the grip button is beautiful. Look at the grip and all too, and the painting. The paint on the scabbard is uh, is really terrific. Wow. Yeah, on both sides. Well, I'm sure we're going to have a nice blade. <laughs> it's not only really nice, it's stone mint. Oh, look at the mirror finish on that blade. Oh my. They just don't come any nicer than that. Wow. And we'll see who the maker is on this one. Oh, it's a Spitzer. Spitzer made wonderful uh, RLB enlisted men's daggers. I mean, that is... Uh, that's an absolute killer uh, with the nickel fittings throughout. Uh, it's really, really nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, as nice as you ever see in an RLB enlisted man. That is just a, a beautiful combination so <laughs> there's the two together I huh? would have seen very very nice well I don't know I'm, I was thinking at first when I saw that uh, holler repro that we were going to be in for trouble here but uh, it doesn't look like it at all so let's see what we got next more taped up bags. Yeah, here we go. And more matching socks. I think this collector had his wife wash all these socks first before he sent them. I appreciate that. Let's see what we got here. Wow. Uh, this looks like RLB day, guys. Wow. <laughs> uh, here's a wonderful um, second model RLB enlisted man um, with nickel fittings also and beautiful hanger and so forth. Uh, these are this is <laughs> these daggers are really really nice. Wow. Even the enamel looks really good on that uh, button too, Ob. You know, a lot of times the um, silvering on the starburst behind the uh, swaths, the silvering's worn off. On this one, it's still all there. And that tells you one thing. It tells you that the dagger was not worn very much. Because, you know, with the hand going over that, that wears that right off. So, let's see what the blade looks like. Wow. Another wonder. Yeah, that's a that's a beautiful that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Nothing like these early RLBs. They're they're just they're just great. Let's see who made this one. Oh, another good maker for these too. It's a Paul Wiresberg. They made high quality RLBs also. With a full mint blade and yeah, it just doesn't really get much nicer than that. Can you get that trademark, Ob? OK. 
Okay, got her. Yeah, that would have. Oh, I wonder what's going to be in this in this other. Probably a second well, bottle officer, I would think. <laughs> uh, you know what? The cross guards come out to here. Yeah. Uh, I would bet uh, uh, a pretty good buck that you're right, Bob. So this man collected the whole series and not only got them in great condition, but uh, they're, they're, they're just uh, real early pieces and wow. Now uh, let's see whether we got the same washed matching sock here. Probably do. Oh, here we go, yep. Yep, the missus, the missus washed it up good. Yeah, you were right, Ob. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it is, another, the RLB second model officer. Wow. And another beauty. Wow, original leather, beautiful nickel fitting, silver plated. Now see on this sunburst there's there's some wear to the silvering but still the enamel looks to be perfect in it which is something you don't see very often. Beautiful fittings, beautiful leather, beautiful cross guard. Oh yeah that's just got got everything. Little wear to the silvering on the edges but uh, hey look at that nice leather all the grain on it. Wow, let's see what the blade looks like. Ah, oh, yes, of course, another mint, uh, another mint blade. So, uh, well, this collector really knows what he was doing, um, and this one is a Wiresburg also. So, uh, there you go, collectors. Um, uh, there's not many people out there that can say that they have a, a full set of RLBs all in first first rate condition. I mean that is, uh, that is a whole collection in itself. For a lot of people that's all you would need to collect just having those four RLBs and get some RLB insignia and stuff to put around them and uh, what, what more do you need? Hmm. Well, you might need a drink, but... Thanks. Yes, sir, collectors, this guy knew what he was doing here. Well, we got one more dagger. The finale should have been the room. I don't know what could top that, but we'll see here. Uh, I'm going to use the right side of the <laughs> Bob Burns cutter here. Oh, another matching sock. Boy, we're in business here, Rob. Maybe it's an SS full room. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? No, it's another another SA. Uh, this one's got a couple of couple of chips in the uh, in the grip, and it's in the scabbard backwards. Uh, it's got. It uh, looks like a factory uh, early repainted scabbard. I have to check to see whether this these are magnetic. They look like they could be plated, but we'll look and see. WM uh, Grupa. See you got a couple little chips here, just surface chips. They're not too bad. It's one of these smooth surface grips too. I wonder what this one will be, Ob. Only one way to find oh <laughs> Uh, this is um, uh, two minus nine. It look, you know what this is? Um, it's a ground room that had a dedication done um, on uh, over the original ground room. That's something we see. You know, they didn't want to waste uh, didn't want to waste these daggers. A lot of them were sent back to the factory, so the factory grown, ground the Rome inscription off, and uh, and this dedication was uh, was put onto it. Oh, 
I'll have to look and see what, what that, uh, let's see, uh, Troop 12568, uh, and from our fewer of the SA Troop Fewer, Otto Schneider, in Troya Dienst, uh, the leader of the Storm von Voth, October 1938. I guess that would have some meaning. I'll have to look up and, and see what that all uh, ties into, but it sounds like it's in tribute to something that, that happened at that time, and we'll see. But uh, that's a very interesting uh, dedication, especially since it went over a ground room. If you can get the camera here, Rob, you can see where this is, see where the grinding right there is a little mishap, and, and you pick it up right away that it is a ground room, and of course the um, trademark is going from the blade too at the same time. Yeah, this is a way to save money. If you're going to give a dagger away, why not give a used one away? <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, there we go. So, that was quite a group of stuff, huh, guys? Wow, I'll tell you. Okay. All right, collectors, remember that uh, ending essay with the dedication. Uh, we should have looked in this envelope because uh, uh, this collector has uh, researched uh, Otto Schneider, uh, the man the dagger was given to, and there's a whole uh, dossier on his record with the essay. So I'll look through that, and uh, um, I'm sure that that'll add a lot of um, interest um, to that particular dagger. Uh, so that was uh, that was quite a grouping of um, of great pieces. When you look at something like that, you wonder uh, why that um, uh, Spanish copy was in there. But maybe uh, maybe he just put it in there to. Uh, fool me or something, I don't know, but um, we shall see. But that was a great grouping of daggers. So we'll see what's next here. Got a fairly big box. Not too heavy, but somewhat heavy. Let's see which is the best way to, to open this baby. That's probably from this end, it looks good. Yep. Well, I hope you guys are having a good holiday here. It's always nice to, to be off from work and so forth for a day, and especially to, to celebrate our uh, getting rid of the British and Throwing the tea in the harbor in Boston, and all you know all that story, and no taxation without representation. Although it seems like we still get a lot of taxation without representation, but oh no, oh no, this is oh, <laughs> oh we got popcorn in here, tons of it. Just put it on the floor and pull it out. I put it on the floor, yeah. Oh, there's popcorn all over the place here. It's nothing new. What are you going to do? It's the nature of this business, guys. It, it is it is good padding, no question about it. Well, it looks like we've got some, some more daggers here, guys. We're getting daggered to death here. Hope you don't mind. I always like to look at daggers. I'm sure you do too. Let's see. Is yeah, that should be it? Now let's see what we got here. Got stuff sticking out of bags and everything that. Oh, wow. Uh, look at this, guys. Um, this is a shooting association cutlass, and um, you see a couple cracks here in the grip, but also see that no, none of the celluloid is missing. Uh, these shooting cutlass grips 
suffer from the same problem as naval daggers because the uh, the grip itself is a carved wood underneath that they dip the celluloid over and then as time goes on the uh, grip shrinks and then we have kind of like an eggshell here and so it's very unusual to find one of these without any cracks and most of the time some of the celluloid's gone so it's great to see this one where all, all the celluloid is still there um, these cutlasses were um, very late. Uh, the shooting association wasn't nationalized till 1939, and uh, it's interesting. The only um, the only swazes you'll see on these are in between the words uh, for the uh, Schutzenverband, just little tiny ones, and uh, the fittings are a. Um, um, a lightweight material that are nickel plated and uh, always a leather scabbard held with the staples like we see on other leather scabbards and uh, let's take a look and see what the blade looks like on this baby oh it comes out nice aha uh -huh. yeah see it's a um, it's got the target on it that represents the um, shooting association with some some hunting scenes and usually these won't have any in, uh, etching on the spine which this one does not just like they normally are and then it has uh, more uh, forestry scenes on the back and up oh, there's the maker uh, that uh, Z uh, inside of a, a shield uh, is the logo for the Clement and Young firm. Uh, they did not make a lot of shooting cutlasses. Most of them are either Icorn or Alcozo, uh, but this is an absolutely original piece here and in uh, very nice condition. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's something you don't see. Now these are these are quite rare. If you're a hunting forestry guy, you got to have a shooting cutlass too to go with your grouping, and that one is a is a great candidate. Let's see what we have next. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow, look here. Uh, you guys are gonna like this one. Wow. This is a um, subordinate forestry uh, and the forestry group was not really nationalized until later on too like the shooting group and in most cases you very rarely see the National Eagle uh, on a forestry cutlass because of the fact that they started to make them as the war started and then they just didn't continue after that. Uh, this is really a, uh, a very, very fine example here with, um, with nice um, stag grip plates and then the nuts are on both sides, uh, good scabbard and wow the original, original frog is here too, it's one of those notch, boy that popcorn, notch types and uh, let's see what the blade looks like. Oh. Okay, it's um, it's got forestry scenes, but you'll you'll note that the etching is done um, horizontally across the blade rather than vertically, like they usually are. Uh, it's a nice etch. The spine is etched, uh, and then on the reverse there is no maker mark, at, but they have good um, forestry scenes here too. Um, Normally when you see perpendicular like scenes on a hunting forestry piece, it's usually a Clement and Young. And um, uh, although this one is not marked, it's absolutely original. Uh, it's got the uh, uh, runners inside like you like to see on original pieces. And it, uh, it's in really, really great condition. Uh, this is a um, kind of a key piece if you're collecting forestry daggers because you'll look at a hundred of them before you'll see um, the eagle like that on the furrow. 
So that's a that's really a uh, a great piece. Um, uh, the man that I bought these from told me that uh, that these pieces come from a a collection that was gathered in the 1950s, and um, the owner is now deceased. So I'm hoping they'll. There'll be more daggers coming. I think there will be. Maybe another drink coming wouldn't hurt. Mm. Ah. Made that one too strong too. Okay, with uh, this 1950s collection, we still got one more piece. And uh, let's see what this one is. Hope it's something that you'll like. Well, this is uh, oh, wow. this is as good as they get. Um, this is a land customs piece, and uh, as you can see, the uh, the hilt fittings are all aluminum. Uh, but what is also nice, the scabbard mounts are all aluminum too. Uh, you can tell that right away because the eyelets are part of the uh, casting of the scabbard mounts. I mean that just uh, that's a beautiful beautiful thing and the leather is incredible on the grip and the scabbard. Yeah, both sides are all right, look at this see collectors there's nowhere here. Nowhere whatsoever on that cross guard. And uh, the uh, top of the pommel shows absolutely no wear. So this looks like a dagger that um, that was um, basically unissued. Uh, let's see who made it now. Wow, perfect blade, brand new condition, just really, really nice. Perfect, perfect blade. And uh, let's see. Ah, oh, I should have guessed. Yeah, it's a it's a Carl Icorn Icorn piece. Really, really pretty. Boy, I can't believe the condition of this. The fittings show no uh, no wear whatsoever. No scratches. No nothing. Uh, this piece is um, is in full full mint. Condition. You don't see too many land customs from my corn. Not too many, no. And they were one of the few producers that, that made the fittings out of aluminum, too. Most of the land customs fittings are steel uh, with a coating of aluminum, but this one is uh, all aluminum. Uh, wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty, that's a very pretty piece. Well, if the if the rest of this 50s collection comes my way, I hope it's all in the, the state that those three pieces are. I mean, that's some, some really, uh, really good stuff, good looking stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'll tell you. I, boy, it's got to make you smile just looking at that uh, forestry and that land customs and, uh, and the shooting too, because you just don't see shooters with a grip in that good of a condition. So that's the uh, that's the things that came in the mail, and uh, I have a couple pieces that I'll I'll show you too that uh, um, came into the office this week. Hope you enjoy them. Uh, um, I did. That's why I bought them. But uh, we'll see what we we got here for them. Get these out of the way. Now I got these uh, these three daggers that people brought into the office this this past week, and uh, uh, I like them all. Uh, uh, this <laughs> second model Luftwaffe. Uh, uh, Look at the smoky nicotine all over the uh, the fittings, and see how yellow that pommel edge is, and all, and the and the yellow all over the uh, the bands, 
yellow all over the hangers. See how yellow that is so you know it's all been together. So this is a this is a piece that probably some veteran had hanging on his uh, uh, kitchen wall right above his kitchen table and he uh, he blew smoke on it for 20 years and uh, it gives it kind of a kind of a neat look and the grip is um, is very beautiful deep deep orange and it's uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. See when you pull the porta pee down a little bit, you see that the grip is a lighter color there. So that porta pee has been on it the whole time. The dagger's been around. So that's that's kind of cool. The porta pee's not in the best of shape, but um, you know it's, it's it's with the dagger. Let's see what the blade looks like. Oh, wow! Well, the smoke didn't get onto the blade. Ah, uh, that blade is really, really a killer. Yeah, it just, it's a, looks like a nickel plated blade. Yeah, it's an SMF with a Waffen Amp. Uh, so that's the best you can get. Uh, those nickel plated blades really held up well and they, they look the same as the day they were sent out of Zoligan. Oh, I noticed something else too. Look, collectors, how Look how the the hanging ring is worn into the hanging band on that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that something? So here's a, I mean this is a dagger that you just, you just don't even want to consider cleaning or taking apart uh, because it just looks so, so cool the way it is. So I like that one a lot. Uh, this next piece is a nice, uh, just a standard uh, naval piece. It has the original uh, knot on it with the the cat's anus stuffing. Uh, the um, the slides kind of frayed, and but it's still in the original tie. It's never been off. Good grip. <clears throat> nice icorn eagle and icorn um, um, lightning bolt scabbard in nice condition throughout. The grip is good. No cracks in it that I can see. And let's see how the blade is. Yeah, the blade is pretty good. It's a it's an etched nautical scene blade, of course, with the uh, 3541 Icorn trademark. Very nice indeed. Let's see if the other side is, yeah, the other side is good too. Yeah, so that's a uh, that's a nice uh, standard naval dagger, and then uh, an SA dagger that's uh, uh, never been cleaned, never touched. Uh, you can see the color of the uh, of the fittings, the dull nickel, uh, the tang nuts never been out of the dagger. Um, it's it's a very it's a nice piece. And um, one thing you'll notice that you're not going to see very often, Ob, if you can get that group of mark there. And for you collectors that know, um, that is an OE, uh, which we uh, don't encounter very often at all because it comes from um, Austria. And the Nazi party was banned in Austria, so we don't see don't see many pieces with that group of mark. And then the blade is it's pretty nice. It's got a little rust, not rust really, but age on the on the bottom of it. Uh, but the motto is still nice and crisp, and um, it's a um, it's a ground Rome icorn. Uh, it's got some age on this side of the blade too, <clears throat> but it's not really. Uh, there's still the blade's still got the cross grain and all, and and as you can see, it's got that um, that early double oval mark. Uh, so we know right away it's a ground room because that mark was only used on the ground room pieces. So that's a kind of a nice thing, especially with the. Um, the OE grouping, I like that a lot. 
and then I've got I've got one more uh, sword that I want to show you and I I think you'll like this sword you you better be sitting down I have to sit down almost every time I look at it all right before before I get to the last sword collectors, there's one other one that I wanted to show you first that I got uh, this week, and uh, I like this. I like this piece a lot. Um, it's really in um, in fine condition. It's um, it's an imperial uh, naval officer's sword. See those red and green eyes, and uh, uh, it's got a beautiful um, beautiful ivory grip on it. Actually, with no no uh, chips or problems, and a, and a nice um, basket hilt with the imperial crown over the anchor, and um, the leather scabbard uh, is still in perfect condition. Really, really good. It's got the staples that hold the fittings on, and uh, then what's really nice, it has a. The original owner's name uh, is engraved on the uh, flap that holds the blade in. Uh, his, his name was Fuhrrath. F-R-O-R-A-T-H. Fuhrrath. And I, uh, I'll show you, the, show you the blade too. The blade is terrific. The blade is in mint condition. It's very unusual to see an imperial piece with a with really a great blade. Um, it's a WKC with the uh, early 1900s uh, trademark, uh, and the the etch is just just really 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 beautiful uh, throughout the blade. Um, it's uh, the other side is in the same same great condition and I uh, I had a minute to to look up Herr Forrath and uh, he was the only person with this name in the Imperial rank list and uh, I found that uh, that he was a um, uh, he was a Kapitan Lieutenant. Uh, he was born in 1889 and uh, <clears throat> joined the Navy in April of 1907. And then in 1917, uh, he became a, um, a torpedo boat uh, guy on um, S-140. The torpedo boats all had letter designations. Uh, as a warrant officer, and then in um, 1916, he became the commander of the torpedo boat G-91. So obviously, there can be a lot looked up about this officer's record, uh, and on top of it, it's a uh, really, really uh, nice sword. So. I'm very happy to uh, to get that. Uh, like I say, you do not see many imperial swords in that fine of a condition. And then I have this last piece that I want to show you, and uh, I think you'll like it a lot. Mm. A little fortitude and. Light my cigar again. This piece comes from a uh, the son of a veteran, uh, and it's um, I think it's something that you'll like. I I like it a lot myself and. It's something that you rarely see. Gentlemen, this is a, uh, a Luftwaffe 
a general sort. Uh, it's the, the uh, gilding is just about a hundred percent on it. It has the beautiful silver eagle, um, which is riveted uh, to the folding clamshell. See these clamshells fold down. A nice <coughs> orange grip. Um, <coughs> except for just a little little bend there the leather is perfect in the scabbard and uh, the reverse of it is also in beautiful condition the reverse also flips up <coughs> and these swords um, were presented by Goring um, to his generals and um, they went on a, a little bit into the war, but once the war started, there were there were not any presentations. And some of the ones that you'll see will just have plain blades that were wartime pieces. Uh, but the original design of this was um, kind of taken after a sword that was given to Herman uh, by the. Um, the guy who was the uh, the Red Cross chief, Edward, Duke of Coburg, and um, Coburg and uh, Goring were pretty good buddies, and uh, uh, Goring had presented the Duke of Coburg a um, a sword for his birthday, so Coburg thought he would uh, return the favor and and gave a beautiful presented sword uh, to Herman which is very similar to the design of the Luftwaffe General Sword and uh, that was in um, November of 1934 so we think that the uh, design of the Luftwaffe General Swords came from the original Coburg presentation to Goering. Uh, we don't know how many Luftwaffe General Swords there were but I would suspect there's possibly around 50. Uh, you could probably count the number of Luftwaffe generals that existed up until about say 1940 or so because as I say I don't think they were they were made much after that. Uh, but as beautiful as the outside is the blades are just uh, just incredible. Uh, this blade is in mint condition uh, it's triple etched and on the obverse it has a blue panel with a raised dedication which uh, basically thanks uh, the general for his service and then they, they gilded uh, the letters with a blue background that really makes it um, and it's interesting too on the, the original examples you'll see that the blue goes into the etch on both sides that's what you want to see on them. Um, the etching is all frosted backgrounds and then on the uh, the other side uh, it has uh, uh, Goring's uh, Der Oberbefallshaber that was head the head of Der Luftwaffe and with Hermann Goring's um, facsimile signature and uh, uh, this is an icorn produced sword. It's one of the few original icorn swords that has a um, etched uh, trademark. Um, uh, most of the icorn swords, if you see an etched trademark, it's uh, you better look further. But on Luftwaffe generals, it's supposed to be that way. Uh, also, on the original icorn diplomatic swords, which are few and far between the trademark is also etched. Um, so this is a, um, a wonderful, uh, wonderful item uh, that I'm very proud uh, to show you and I hope you like it. It's, um, it's something you're not gonna you're not gonna see very often and um, could easily be the, the highlight of, uh, of any collection. Mm. and a drink to the sword so I think that's something that is worthwhile and uh, 
I hope that you uh, that you enjoyed seeing it. So, on that note, uh, I will have to end our little program. Again, I hope it wasn't too long, and I hope you found it of interest. And uh, I appreciate uh, all your comments and uh, all the viewers. And uh, uh, write me if I can do anything for you. And I hope you're enjoying the hobby. Remember, buy what you like. That's the whole key to things. But check it out first. See you next time.